What's going on? So we got Facebook going. Hello on Facebook. Won't be able to see any messages on Facebook, but I see that happening right now. Also, we have the live going on here on Zoom. We're going to give it another two, maybe three minutes to get the show on the road. And we're going to have some fun, y'all. We're going to have some fun. So I'm going to be admitting some people in right about now. I got the energy drink lit up and ready. Lit up and ready. So what's going on, Eric? What's going on, Marquise? Hello. And I believe, Marquise, you're going to be, you listening, you double listening right now. We got two people listening over there. I got Eric. He's going to be going out for a run and listening in as well, which is pretty dang dope, if I do say so myself. All right, since I got my people listening in on Facebook and y'all here, we're going to get going. So welcome on in. My name is Donovan Will. And tonight I'm going to be talking about just now or never. And that's exactly why I wanted to start a little bit sooner than later, because it's now like we, we live in the now we're here. We're ready to do big things. And throughout this webinar, I'm going to be really diving in deep on the importance of living in the now versus waiting and being complacent. I'm really going to be diving in on that, talking about different uh, situations from my clients as well as myself to and giving you the tools to elevate and take action in the moment here and now. All right. So I do have a presentation, a little PDF pulled up and ready. So I'm going to get that going for y'all here and for y'all listening in on Facebook. As I said, I won't be able to see the chat on Facebook and we do have the live going in on Zoom. Just wanted to let you know. All right, all right, all right. Fantastic, cool. So now or never, this is what we're here for. This is what we are living in the now, we're living here, we're living present, and we want to live the best that we absolutely can, okay? So the best way to live is to have discipline over absolutely everything. And when we hold ourselves back, we really miss out on a lot of opportunities. So with life, we have moments of feeling motivated. We have moments where we wake up feeling lit up. We're feeling excited. Oh my gosh, I'm ready to go live our best life. And then we have moments where we wake up and we're completely missing it. Like 100% missing it all. Not feeling excited, not feeling energized. The body feels tired and it's, we feel exhausted. It's, and it's very, very normal for that to happen. But when we have our goals, if we allow those feelings to overcome those goals, those goals get pushed back further and further and further. So as we're talking about, as we're going through this webinar this evening, I want you to think about the number one goal that you have. I want you to think about what you're working on, what you're striving for in your life right here, right now. And I want you to think about that as we're working through this webinar. And think about the moments where you have felt motivated. And then think about those moments where it just slipped right through your fingers. And that's why I compare motivation to flowing water. Flowing water is one of the most powerful things in the world. It creates mountains. It creates countries. It creates so much. But when you try to grab it, it slips right through your finger. 
when you're pushing through towards your goals, sometimes you're creating those mountains within yourself. You're moving, you're doing big things, but sometimes it just slips through your fingers. And that's why having discipline is so important over anything. And that's why I can play, uh, compare discipline to a steady mountain. Discipline is unshakable, unmovable. You lock in and it's there. There's no ifs, no ands, no buts. It is what it is. When you try to grab, when you're on a mountain and you try to grab those rocks, you feel it. The first time I ever felt a mountain, I was standing on top of the mountain and I felt my feet shaking with that mountain. I felt the earth moving because it was so strong. I, I can't even move it. I'm climbing over it. And discipline is the same exact thing. When you feel discipline, when you are owning your moment and you are absolutely in it, you are locked and you feel the energy. You can grasp that energy. And this is how you tackle the moment. This is how you tackle the here and the now. So through this webinar, I'm going to be giving you three tips to stay disciplined before you get motivated. So when you wake up in the morning, you're locked in. Throughout the day, you know you have stuff you need to do, you're locked in. Work doesn't get in the way. Family doesn't get in the way. Your spouse, your partner doesn't get in the way. You are just locked because you know why you're doing it. You know you cannot negotiate out of it. And I'm going to teach you how to create some rewards when you are locked in and disciplined. Also, I'll be teaching you how to lock in some penalties because you got to have the good and the bad. It happens. <laughs> And these are all tools that I lock in and I utilize with my clients as well. Because when you have big goals, you have to stay disciplined. You don't want to slip. You don't want to have those goals slip right through your fingers. All right. So I want to tell you a little bit more about me. I know, so uh, like I said, I know I have Facebook on here. Some of y'all don't know me. And here on Zoom, this is, you know, introductions. You don't know much about me, but you know I might know a little bit. So as I said at the beginning of this, my name is Donovan Will. I've been in the fitness industry for the past 12 years. I've bounced around from New York City over to LA. And one of the beautiful things about going from New York City over to LA is in New York, it's high energy all the time. There's no fluff. It's straight to the point. It's real and it's authentic. Whereas when you get to LA, you feel the flowing water. It's very chill. It's very relaxed. And you miss out on a lot of stuff. Even though you're doing a lot, you are still missing out on some things. So in my life, I've been locked in and had the opportunities to run the Chicago Marathon. To run marathons, to run half marathons, to run any type of race, to have fitness goals. You have to be disciplined because you're not going to want to do it every single day. When I did the Chicago Marathon, um, one month before I was diagnosed with COVID. And when you're in marathon training, about two to three weeks before you do a marathon, you're supposed to go out on the longest run of your training block. So I was training with a group over in California, Social Hour Run Club, and I was aiming to do a 22-mile run. And I felt the COVID in me. I felt my lungs burning. I felt my body hurting. And I called it. I was like, my body is not ready for this. That motivation depleted. Traveled out to Chicago. I lined up on the line and I trusted my body. I was disciplined. I still did all the work I needed to do up until that 22 mile run. And my body came through. And I achieved my goal of running the fastest marathon that I've done, a 334 marathon. That wasn't because of motivation. That was because of discipline. I woke up early. I woke up and I ran in the rain. I ran at 10, 10 p.m. at night after work, locked in. I've traveled the world because in my head, I knew I was always going to travel the world. And every time I had a moment of getting on that plane, 
I did whatever it took to take in that adventure. I could wake up and like, ah, maybe I don't want to travel today. My body, I felt sick. When I traveled to Canada, which is what you're looking at here, when I traveled to Canada two weeks before I broke up with my girlfriend, I was exhausted, but I committed to my friends. I had the accountability of my tribe. And they're like, hey, you need to do this. Stick with it. You already told us you were coming. I was like, all right, you're right. I already said I was going to do it. So let me hop on that flight. And I could tell you, going out to Canada, standing there taking this photo was one of the most beautiful moments of my life. Because I had that accountability to hold me in, to hold me strong. And now I'm going to teach you how to get that today. So to start off, remember those goals that I told you to think about at the beginning. Think about them here and now. Really lock in on those. And we're going to talk about non-negotiables. So non-negotiable is something that you do regardless of how you are feeling. You just do it. So you see here, contracts. Contracts is a contract between you and yourself. Because if you give up on yourself, you're going to give up on everyone else. So whatever your goal is, write it down and sign your name. Because now you're in contract with yourself and you have to see that. If it's on your phone, if it's on a piece of paper, whatever it is, you get to see that contract. And now you cannot negotiate out of this goal. We can modify the goal. It might not happen this year. That's okay. Maybe next year, maybe the year after, but you still have to put in the work to get there. So I know so for some of my clients, as well as myself, we have fitness goals. When you're, when you're trying to lose some weight, when you're trying to get that body right for the summer, grabbing, that, grabbing those McDonald's ain't going to work. You know that's not going to help you get to your goal. Being at 7% body fat, I know having fast food is not going to contribute to me having the body that I want. It's not going to contribute to me being single digits body fat percentage. I have a contract of staying in the single digits of body fat percentage. I need to do whatever it takes to get there. No matter how I feel, I might be so tempted to go grab that Chipotle. Oh, it's going to sound tempting. The steak over rice with some guacamole, some beans. Oh, yeah. But you know what? That's against my rules. It's against my contract. I cannot negotiate. Oh, maybe today I could work out a little bit harder. No, it's not going to work. And that's where boundaries come into place. So setting boundaries around what's going to work for you and what isn't. If you know going out with your friends going out partying till 2 a.m. You know that's going to happen. Set a boundary. I am leaving that party at 11 p.m. because nothing good happens after 11 p.m. You're going to be drinking too much. You're going to want the drunk food, that pizza on your way home, those tacos on your way home. Is that going to contribute towards your goals? So really think about your goal as a whole because it's never just one thing. Because if you think about just one thing, it's easy to let it slip through your fingers. And that's where motivation just doesn't work anymore. And when you are getting closer and closer towards those goals, sometimes you are going to mess up and that's okay. Show yourself some grace. Show yourself some love, some self-love, that compassion. Because you can only control so many things. I was having a conversation with someone today who was getting ready to do um, their first marathon and they reached out to me to get some last minute tips. And this is what happens with a lot of people who are stepping into the running world for the first time. They're like, can you give me some extra tips for this marathon? I was like, yeah, don't try anything new. <laughs> if you try something new, you're going to screw yourself over. But whatever happens on that race day, 
you did the work to get here. And that's all I said. Those are the biggest tips. Because the world doesn't owe you anything. And when, especially when it comes down to fitness, the world doesn't owe you anything, but you get to do everything, everything to get that much closer to your goal. You'd be putting in the work right here, right now. And then out of nowhere, tree falls down. I'm happy I'm putting in the work right here, right now. And I have to be grateful that I am doing that. So whatever your goal is, if you're trying to travel the world, if you're here trying to make a million dollars, do the work and know that the work is being done. You might not get the goal here and now, and that's okay. You still get to acknowledge that you're putting in the work, but every day you have to put in the work. That's non-negotiable. I committed every single day I get to take an ice bath until I reach my biggest ultimate goals. Every day I've taken an ice bath, take a cold shower. Do I want to? Heck no. It's cold. Still doing it. And when you're working on those goals, you get to see what's working for you. Seriously, look and audit what you are doing. What's working and what's not working. At the end of the day, when you put that head on the pillow, before you close your eyes, think about this. Okay. This really worked today. You know, I'm out here. I'm trying to stay in the single digits. I'm trying to stay at that 7% body fat. Did I have enough calories today? Quality calories? Was that extra peanut butter a little bit too extra? Maybe that ice cream was a little bit too much. That's not working. That's not going to work. I can't do that again tomorrow. I'm glad I had that ice cream. But I cannot do that again tomorrow, and you knock it out. Yesterday's ice bath. Ice bath. Oh, man, it was cold. Oh, it was cold. But you know what? It was smooth. It was good. I still did it. It was a little bit shorter than what my normal is, though. So today's ice bath cannot be short. It's going to stay consistent with what I was doing, what I have been doing. So look at your life, look at your goals. What's non-negotiable? I know some people, when they get into relationships, they set up those red flags. We have some more people joining in. They set up those red flags. My partner, and this is always a funny one. My partner could not be making less than this amount of money. That's a red flag. That's a non-negotiable for this person. Not willing to slide on it. And that's okay. That's that person can't knock it. You get to have those same exact rules for your goals. Whatever that goal is, lock in on it. See what's working and what isn't working. Show that grace. You might not hit it every day, but keep working at it. But when it comes down to these goals, you really... Get to know why you're chasing these goals. So everybody right now, I know some people are working out, listening in. You might be at your desk right now, writing down these goals, but really, what's that goal? The number one goal you're striving for. You might not have it. It's okay. But something that you get to do in the next three days, a really important goal for you. Got it? All right, it's in your head. Now ask yourself, why is that your goal? Whatever that answer is, ask it seven times. Why is this your goal? Because what tends to happen when we're setting up goals is we're surface level. That's just the way the world has conditioned a lot of us. We're so surface level with how we communicate. We're surface level with ourself. We're surface level with how, where we want to go. So whatever your first goal is, ask yourself why, and then ask yourself, why is that your first answer? And then just keep asking yourself why minimum seven times. It can be one of the most frustrating 
upsetting and annoying things. Why is this my goal? And just keep going. Because what's going to happen as you keep going down, you keep getting deeper and deeper into your soul, into who you are, into why you're chasing this. And when that answer hits you, you might even shed a little tear. Your heart might open up a little bit. You might even call somebody, oh my gosh, this is what's going on right now because you feel that lit up. I'm on the path of opening up a retreat center somewhere in Asia. A retreat center either in Thailand, Japan, Vietnam, in communication right now. But I had to really dig deep and figure out why do I want to open a retreat center? Because the funny thing is with being a coach is a lot of people don't want to be coached. They don't want to be, they don't want to feel uncomfortable when someone tells them the truth. That's very, very normal. <laughs> and sometimes I question myself, why am I coaching you? And I keep asking these whys. I did, I dive deep. And when it came down to opening up this retreat center, it took about five whys to get my answer. Why do I wake up early to get this goal? Why do I do this? Why do I do that? Why am I even coaching? Why do I want to open up this retreat center? Simply came down to is I am the permission. When that hit, that feeling, I messaged my clients. I was like, we're getting work. Are you hitting your goals? Are you hitting your action items right here, right now? Are you doing the work? Because I know I am. And after I, that I am the permission hit me, for some reason it came in my head. Watashi wa kyoko desu. I am permission in Japanese. And that simple phrase lights me up when things get hard. So when things get hard and you're starting to negotiate out of your goal, you're starting to negotiate out of your action items that's going to get you closer to your goal, find that deep answer, that deep why to get you closer and remind you why you're doing what you're doing. You're sitting in that basement, putting in the work, you're sitting at that laptop, you're grinding out the hours with no real result, but you're put laying that foundation in. Why are you doing it? You remind yourself why you're doing it. You're going to feel reignited. You don't need no light to shine a light on you because you're the light and you'll feel it. You know, this photo that you're looking at here on the screen, it's a photo of the, the, the night sky up in the highest point of Colorado called Leadville. It's one of my favorite nighttime photos. I left my Airbnb. I was working the next day at 5 a.m. I left the Airbnb to drive to a middle of a lake to take this one photo. I believe there's a shooting star in it too. And as I was in the car, I remember, I remember this vividly. It's like, why am I driving to the middle of nowhere to take a photo? Simple inspiration. It was a one answer why. This photo is going to inspire me for the rest of my life. Sometimes those answers are going to come to you right away. Sometimes they're not. The bigger the goal, the harder it is to dive deep with your whys. That's why I minimum seven times. Big goal, retreat center, I had to dive deep. I hit five. Hit, I am the permission. Why am I the permission? Watashi wa kyoko desu. And I hit another deeper Japanese why. <laughs> like you got to dive deep. You want to move out of your house? You want to move to a new country? You want to get that million dollars? Ask yourself why. What's possible when you ask yourself why is you find yourself. You're giving yourself the permission. Everything you do has to have some type of intention. Everything you do gets to have some type of why behind it. Because when it does, you're going to feel energized. Why are you running this marathon? 
Why are you running this half marathon? Why are you losing these 10 pounds? Why are you starting this business? It's beautiful. It's fun. It's, it's deep and it's engaging, but you get to do this on your own. The power of why is you and you alone. It's hard, but it's okay. Because when you have that answer and then someone asks you, hey, why are you doing this? You have a quick response. You don't have to even think about it. Some people are going to judge you when you're going towards your goals. It doesn't matter because you know why you're hitting those goals. You know why you're doing these action items to hit your goal. And oh, it feels good. Oh, it feels powerful. And it's fun. It's fun. It's enjoyable. And when you get to share that with other people, the world is your playground. And that's going to be really important when you do share it with other people. Because other people get to hold you accountable once you know your why and they know it too. Because when people hold you accountable, there's no backing out. And that's the, the joy I get out of coaching. I see the joy that these people get to feel when they get to that goal. And I also get a lot of their frustration too. They don't like it. They don't like being held accountable. But it's okay. Because you continuously push through. You continuously get closer to where you want to go. And I get you there. When you're being held accountable and you don't have someone to coach you, you get to create your own reward system. Let's say you didn't want to go out for that run this morning. You didn't, you didn't want to go meet your coach this morning. But you did it. You did it anyway. Amazing. Great job. Beautiful. On the other side of it, treat yourself. One thing that I get to do every week when I hit all my action items, and I have a lot of action items throughout the week, I make one of my favorite styles of coffee, a dirty chai. And it takes a little bit of work to make a dirty chai because you have to make a coffee, you have to make chai. If you don't know what chai is, it's, also, it's tea in Indian, so chai. Make a fun little latte. But it takes time, it takes work. But all the work I did Monday through Friday, I hit my action items, always dirty chai time. Because I know every time I have that dirty chai, I'm getting closer to my goal. My big retreat center. Every time I get closer, every time I have a sip of that dirty chai, I feel that, I feel that retreat center. It warms me up. So whatever your goal is, you have your non-negotiables. You know why you're doing it. Create a reward on all those little things. You want to lose 10 pounds. Wonderful. Every pound, take yourself out to a fun little self date. You like to go to a little poetry spot on the Lower East Side of New York? Amazing. Every pound you lose, take yourself out to that poetry spot. And remind yourself why you're there when you're sitting in that crowd like I'm here because I lost one pound and then you have a big reward when you hit that 10 pound goal you want to start a business you start your you op you file your LLC boom step one little reward you're starting your virtual coaching business wonderful your first client boom little reward 10 clients, big reward. Fantastic. You have a goal of running your first marathon. Every time you do a 5K, you're consistent with your weekly training, your weekly runs. 
wonderful. Maybe next time you go for a run, you go somewhere new that you've always wanted to explore. Maybe you take yourself out on a little coffee date. All these little things add into it. But with rewards, you get to have penalties as well. <laughs> you got to have the yin and the yang. Because let's say you don't hit it. It's okay. Remember, you're showing yourself grace. You get to show yourself grace. The penalty shouldn't be deterring you from your goal, but keep you motivated to get it. So my penalty system is that ice bath. Because I know every time I'm taking an ice bath, it's going to keep me energized to get closer to my retreat center. It won't allow me to get lazy. It's going to keep me excited. Because I could already feel my retreat center having an ice bath there and me sitting in it. Do I want to take an ice bath? Heck no, but I still do it anyway. So do the things that you know are still going to be supportive for you. But keep you excited. Keep you motivated. Keep you engaged and closer to where you want to go. And like I said, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your tribe, tell everybody that you want to know because everybody deserves to know what your goals are because they're yours. Don't hide it. Why would you hide who you are? For years, I've hid my goals and didn't tell anybody. But the moment I started to tell people, one, they knew and they would remind me like, hey, aren't you supposed to be doing this soon? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I am. I am doing this soon. You know, you're hearing about my retreat center right now. You're going to be on the first of that list when I put it out to the public. Like, hey, I, you were talking about this retreat center. When you, are you Aren't you launching it soon? What country is it in? You're going to share that curiosity. And that's going to keep me excited. Tell my friends, tell my family, and my, my selected family I call tribe. If you don't have a selected family, I definitely encourage you to find one. Because those people are going to hold you up. And if they don't hold you up, they might, they might not be a part of your tribe. So think about that goal again. You might have one non-negotiable that came to mind. You might have started to dive a little bit deeper on your whys. What's a reward? I have one of my clients, when she hits her action items through the week, she goes, she goes to get her nails done. Simple. The penalty system, though, is a fun one. Penalty system, doing things that, you know, keeping her motivated is going on a self-date. Works towards the goals, but that self-date is a little bit scary, but it's still a reward. A little bit scary, but keeps you motivated to what you want to do. And telling me, telling friends, telling everybody. And that's what we want to do with our goals. Because in all honesty, life is here and now. We cannot wait any longer. Think about it. I've paused. I put my life on pause for years. I entered a relationship. It's okay. I paused to focus on other people's goals. I paused what I wanted to reach after so my partner could reach her goals. I'm not upset about it, but my goals got pushed back a few years. That, that she got her goals, wonderful. Love it. My goals? I had to learn a little bit more, so my goals weren't ready. Do you want to wait a few more years for your goals? Because I can tell you right now, my retreat center isn't waiting. My retreat center, the action items, you know, they stack it. They stack it. Me running marathons. Oh, I'm getting faster. I'm putting in the work to go longer. I'm putting in the work to do absolutely everything. So when I do reach that goal, one, it's not a surprise. Two, when it happens... I'm already ready for the next level. I don't want to wait until 
I can't move the way I move now. If I had someone telling me these three steps when I was in high school, I would have been a lot more focused. When you were selecting your major in college, if someone kept asking you why to the point where you got upset and frustrated, but you got clear, would you be upset that you got that much closer to your goal? Because you would have probably expedited you reaching your goal a lot faster than later, a lot sooner than later. There's nothing wrong with starting late because once you're aware, you're aware. You know what you have to do. You know what you get to do to get there. Use all the lessons that you've had from your past to get you closer to your goal. And that's the joy. That's the benefit of those whys. I cannot emphasize enough. Having the why can get you places. Having my why got me to Japan. Having my why got me to Slovenia. Having my why got me to run a, a 334 marathon. Having my why helped people run their first marathon. Run New York City marathon. Run the LA marathon. Run marathons in Montana. My why helped them figure out their why. And I hope you could figure out your why right here, right now. Because then you can explain to yourself, not to me, but to yourself first and foremost, why you don't want to wait any longer until you hit to have you hit your goal. Do you want to wait longer? Can you convince me? <laughs> and this is what I have my clients do. Convince me why you want to wait. If I'm convinced, hey, you convinced yourself. I'm like, I believe anything is possible if you put in the work here and now. If you want to wait, be my guest. I can't. And I'm going to do whatever it takes so you can be convinced of your why. And why you should be taking action right here, right now. Because if you can't do it here and now, when are you going to do it? When are you going to put in the work to get to closer to your goal? You want to lose that weight? Do you really want to wait a little bit longer to lose weight? You want to start that business? Are you really going to wait? When here in the States, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? Who knows? I love sports because... These athletes get traded left and right. They're going to put in the work every single day because they don't know what's going to happen tomorrow with their career. They might get injured. They might get traded. Are they going to be upset if they didn't put in the work? Like they get hurt. Imagine getting hurt on a lazy day. <laughs> That's upsetting. I know I'd be upset if I'm going out and I know I have a 20 mile run. I want, I'm excited. I hyped myself up for a 20 mile run and I get started. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe uh, I'm going to negotiate my way out of this right now. And then as I'm negotiating, I get hurt. I'm going to be upset. Are you negotiating out of your goals? Being a little lenient? Amazing. Show yourself some grace right now. Then let's take some action. Let's bring yourself right back on track. I want to see you on that track. I want to see you hit those goals. I don't want to wait 10 years for you to hit your goals. I want to see them tomorrow. Or like, I want to get that message. Yo, Coach D, I did this. I ran three laps around the lake today. Tomorrow I'm doing four. Hey, hey, I only told you to do two. I'm feeling excited. I'm feeling ready. That's the type of excitement you get when you know your why. That was one of my favorite messages I woke up to yesterday. My client said, I told her, just do one lap. She ended up doing three and a half because she knew her why. That's invigorating. I want to get that excitement because you have that excitement. I'm going to try to, I'm going to match your excitement because life is that beautiful. When you live here right now and you're not waiting.
And with this, on my final note here, I have this tattooed on my arm. The woods are dark, lovely, and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Yes, I'm a runner, obviously. But the depth of that, I have so much to do in my life. Yeah, I can I can catch my rest. Ooh, it looks easy. But I have so much to do right now because I promised myself I got goals to hit. I got things to do. I got world, I got countries to hit. I got miles to see. And I got people to support. I got people that I want to see hit their own goals. I hit my goal of running the Chicago Marathon. I got a tattooed right on my back. I hit my goal of going out to Thailand, going out to Japan. I ran over in Slovenia. I got photos up in Colorado. I stood on top of walls over in Jerusalem. Because I have things to do in my life. And I know you do too. You have these goals. You have these passions. Don't wait to get them. Don't wait any longer. Like I'm seriously telling you right here, right now. If you wait another moment, that moment becomes 10 moments. 10 moments become 10 years. 10 years become 20 years. And then that goal, that dream that you had has slipped right through your fingers. All the motivation that you had slipped right through your fingers. But if you took the action right here, right now, locked in that contract, created that non-negotiable for yourself to hit that goal, to do the action items, to hit your goals, I promise you, you will not be upset when you get them. You will feel excited. You will feel like, oh my gosh, the world is mine. So you promised yourself, you wrote that contract to yourself and life is so beautiful when you are reaching your goals and taking actions towards them because on the other side of action is nothing but gratification. People who get upset when I tell them to go, you know, anyone could run a marathon, you know why they get upset? Because they don't want to be disciplined. I love the analogies of marathons and ultra marathons. Because it takes hard work on yourself. You physically feel it and you can't negotiate it when you feel that pain when you're going out for that run. And that's why I love this quote. And I have miles to go because I know it's going to be painful. I know it's going to hurt, but I still got stuff to do before I go to sleep. Right after this call, I'm hitting these miles. I'm going to message each and every one of you. What's your goal? I, to, I told you mine. I want to know yours because I'm going to hold you accountable if you're willing to share it, of course. So I got my, I got things to do in my life. And this right here, this webinar right here, this is a promise. I'd said every two weeks I'm doing a webinar, no matter what. That was a promise to me. It's a promise to you. Because life is too good. Life is too good and I'm not ready to go to sleep yet. So whatever you're doing right here, right now, think about those goals. Look out for that email tonight <laughs> and ask yourself why you are chasing these goals. And one lovely thing that I love about this quote, and this is my final statement before we sign off tonight. The woods are dark, lovely, and deep. The woods is natural. And naturally, you will never find anything in a straight line. Nothing in nature is straight. Those trees in the woods, they don't go straight up. The wind blows them in every direction. Their roots are going in every direction. So your goals... There's not a straight line to hit your goal, and that's okay. Have some grace on yourself. Bob and weave. Go left and right. Let the wind blow you. Like, no, you are still going in the right direction. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining in tonight, today, this morning, this afternoon, whatever time you're watching this, and you're part of the world. 
I appreciate you. I'm excited to see your goals. I'm excited to learn about your goals and excited why you are chasing your goals. Life is too good to wait. I'm here and now. Here and now. And if you won't, if you don't, and if you won't feel that life is here and now, I promise I will remind you to be here and now. Because if you won't do it, I could promise Donovan will. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Enjoy the time you're thinking about your goals, making those contracts, telling your friends and family, creating that tribe. Because when you hit that goal, everyone's going to celebrate. You are amazing. And I thank you once again. That is it for me, everyone. So if you want to come in the chat, let me know. Say what's up. I'm going to be shutting down the recording here.